Although you know it fully that staying up late is gonna have negative consequences on you and your day, you still do it anyway. You might be the culprit of something called revenge bedtime procrastination. Revenge bedtime procrastination refers to a phenomenon in which people put off going to bed to engage in activities that they don't have time for during the day. It is the way of finding some time for leisure and activities and entertainment at the expense of sleep. The term bedtime procrastination was first introduced in 2014 in a research paper. And then the word revenge was later introduced in China for all those people who were working 12 hours per day or more and engaged in this activity. They were sacrificing their sleep just for some entertainment. After that, there was a tweet that went viral by Daphne K. Lee, a journalist, who described a bit this phenomenon. She said that People who don't have much control over their daytime life refuse to sleep early to regain some sense of freedom during late night hours. But you should know something, staying up late is not automatically equal to revenge bedtime procrastination. There are three key features that define it. First of all, the delay to go to sleep must decrease the overall time a person sleeps. Number two, this delay must not be caused by something else, for example an illness or the environment is not optimal for sleep. And finally, number three, people who engage in this activity are fully aware of the negative consequences, yet they do it anyway. This might affect people differently, depending on their situation and why they feel the need to stay up late. For parents, for example, after they put their kids to bed, this is almost their only time they get to do something for themselves. On the other hand, for people with hectic jobs and schedules, lounging on the couch and enjoying a TV show is their only time to have some unstructured relaxation. And some other people might use these late night and early morning hours to catch up on hobbies or engage in more energy intensive activities. But who revenge bedtime procrastination really affects? Many people might be affected from time to time, this is fine. But recurrently, we have discovered that many parents, as I have previously mentioned, people who work a lot of hectic jobs, and people who have many high stressful working hours. And the dangerous part is that it often starts small. You might start with 10 to 15 minutes on your phone, and then it adds up to 30, 45, one hour, and then maybe two hours. One study also found that women students were more affected by this phenomenon. While the most obvious cause is the lack of free time is the most one, but this is not the only culprit. A 2014 study published in the Journal of Frontiers of Psychology suggested that revenge bedtime procrastination was negatively correlated with self-regulation. While people engaging in this activity, they want, they have an intention to sleep, but they don't know how to do it willingly. Their behaviors do not align with their will. It is also suggested that people who experience this are even in general more prone for the normal procrastination. The third possible cause is your sleep cycle might be affecting this behavior. Those called the night owls, they are obliged to wake up early, might also engage in this activity. And finally, another research suggested that this is an interplay of three things at the same time. A person's natural sleep schedule, their self-control resources, and their work schedule. Then okay, we are doing it anyway, but what's the real danger here? Unfortunately, sleep deprivation has many negative consequences. Some of them include anxiety, depression, irritability, decreased mood, difficulty concentrating, high blood pressure, weight gain, memory loss, increased risk of cardiac diseases, so on and so forth. Now for the solution. You're gonna need a lot of guides on the internet telling you to prioritize your sleep, uh, turn off all the electronics, start your nighttime routine earlier, but I think that all of these are good but they're not that practical, they don't really work. The only trick that I think is crucial to do is not to take your cell phone with you to bed and add this to your brain. Getting bored is good. Go to bed without your cell phone, try to get bored. Yeah, just lay down, do some deep breathing and see where your mind will take you. And yeah, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe or don't.